It's good to be in the Lord's house and uh, looking forward to uh, preaching this morning. And if you would uh, be praying for this evening's service, be back in the life of David tonight. And I've uh, been there a little while, and I hope you're gleaning some things from the life of David. Amen. Uh, but as you turn your Bible, Proverbs chapter 8, and um, the reading will be a little lengthy this morning, uh, but maybe I'll make up the time and stop when the Lord says stop. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I like it when somebody's preaching and God's finished for them to finish. Amen. How many of you have been blessed before and God's been finished 30 minutes and they're still going on? Well, I don't want to be that way. Amen. <laughs> I want to be on time. Amen. Now that I've got you a little laughing, it's good to say uh, welcome to our social media uh, and uh, be praying for all those. Remember Brother Jack Cole, uh, those of you on social media, many of you know him. Please pray for him and his family. Proverbs chapter 8, starting in verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? Watch this. It is though God is giving us a picture of wisdom being separated from everything else and easy to see and to, uh, to get to. Notice what he says here in this verse. Uh, she standeth in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths. In other words, if you miss this, you have intentionally, willfully went around wisdom is what he's saying there. Notice with me. Uh, she's in the, in the path of the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates. Now, you know, if you're going to get in the city, you've got to go through the gates. And what, what God is highlighting here is, uh, you're not going to get past. You're not going to be able to die and say that I didn't offer you wisdom. Uh, she's, she's on the high places and she's in the gates. And you'll have to make sure that you voluntarily avoid my wisdom if you die without it. Let's keep reading. Notice verse 3. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Watch this. Verse 4 is a key verse. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and be ye, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things, for my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. You'll never be able to say you've got something bad from the Bible. You'll never be able to say that there was something that we picked up from God that misled us or, or, or led us in the wrong path is what he's saying there. Notice with me if you would verse 9. Uh, they are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than gold. For whom is better, watch this, for wisdom is, uh, is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Here it is, I wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Watch it, verse 14, we're going to hit on. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom I am understanding, I have strength. Watch this, listen. God's saying, by what I'm talking about, this transpires and this happens. Notice with me in verse 15. By me kings reign, and princes degree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the world, earth. Verse 17 is a key verse. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. 
Watch it. Here's the commodities that come along with God's wisdom. We're going to talk about that. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those, watch this, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Now here's what I want you to home in on. All of a sudden we've been talking about wisdom. Now God is going to break on the scene and God is going to reveal to us a major doctrine throughout the Bible. And that is that Christ has always been. When Mary, some of us are, are ignorant. Now that word ignorant doesn't mean that you're stupid. It just means you're not aware of something. Amen. Some of us are ignorant of this doctrine. Uh, Jesus didn't begin in the manger when Mary had him. Amen. He's always been. And I could go throughout the scriptures and prove this. But there's a reason God is telling us that in this text. And I'll get to it here in a moment. He is showing you and I that Jesus is the wisdom that God is talking about. And this wisdom has always been. Amen. Jesus has always been around. Notice your Bible. Let's keep our reading in verse 21. Uh, that I may cause them, that uh, the, the, those that love me, to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. Watch this. The Lord possessed me. In the beginning of his way. Stop there. He's always been around, friend. Amen. Christ didn't just, when he come into the world, he came into this world and took upon him flesh, the, the, the flesh of man, that he might die and redeem man. Jesus, listen to me, has no beginning. He is co-equal and co-eternal. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, all three are co-equal and co-eternal. Don't ever forget that, okay? Now there's a reason that God is emphasizing this. He's speaking about Jesus. He's speaking about Jesus being wisdom. Notice what he said in verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Watch this. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Before God ever hung one star or the moon. Jesus, God's son, the prince of heaven, friend, the, the king of this world. One day he'll sit his throne up, by the way. He'll rule with a rod of iron. He has always been and will always be. I was talking to a preacher the other day. I said, can you imagine when he comes back? He, when he comes back and he begins to rule the earth with a rod of iron and all of a sudden he meets with the nations and he's fixing to divide the leaders all over this world. Did you know one thing? When we step in his presence, there'll be no suggestions. Amen. There'll be no one raising their hand, giving advice to God on how to rule this world. And that's what he's highlighting here. Notice with me if you would. Verse 23, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, watch it, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, watch it, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the mountains of the deep, watch this one, when he gave the, the sea his degree, watch it, that the water should not pass his commandment. In other words, he's saying this, when God created the sea, God put a border, he put a barrier, if you will, on how far that water could go. See, that water just don't go anywhere it wants to go. It goes where God tells it to go. And, and what he's saying here, when God put the sea and created the sea and, and put the barrier, if you will, at the stopping line of the sea, he said, I was there. Amen. 
I was there is what Jesus is saying. Now watch it. Verse 30. Then was I by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. I want to preach to you this morning on the thought, the availability of wisdom. The availability of wisdom. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the precious word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Although heaven and earth will pass away, your word will endure forever. I pray this morning you would remove the scales off of our eyes. Help us to see the unsearchable riches of Christ. Yea, Paul said the deep things of God. And I pray, Lord, you'd bless the Bible. We'll love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 4, let me draw your attention to. The Bible says in verse 4 of chapter 8, Unto you, O men, I call. Now that word men there doesn't just mean men. He's talking about mankind. There was a time when God created this world. Somebody said, Preacher, I don't understand all this. Well, God never told you you had to understand it. You just got to believe it. But it takes someone who is in willful defiance to deny the Bible. God created the man. Now look, if you believe in that Big Bang Theory, friend, I, I, I would question some things in your... It takes more faith to believe that a, a rock fell out of the Astrodome, if you will, or wherever it did, and it blew up, and 17 million monkeys came from it, okay? No, God looked down. Let me tell you what happened. God looked down and he breathed the breath of life in man. Watch this. Listen to the Bible. And man became a living soul. You are living and breathing this morning because divine breath was given to you and I. And I'll tell you this much. No man knows what a day may bring. No man knows what an hour may bring. We're here the day we could be gone tomorrow, friend. I read of a, a fellow called me just yesterday. And he was on the phone pouring his heart out. He's got a 22-year-old stepdaughter who, by the way, a report on Lexi, I'm referring to her. Uh, she got up yesterday in the hospital and walked from the bed to the chair. Been up there for pushing two a year and a half now uh, with COVID in her lungs and uh, waiting for a, a lung transplant. We don't know what all is going to transpire, but 22 years old, friend, if it wasn't for God's grace, some of us that age could be up in a hospital, but God's allowed you to breathe, and he's allowed you to move on. But she got up, and she walked from the bed yesterday, and she sat in a chair. Uh, now, she's on a ventilator, by the way. And the man called me, and he said, he said yeah, he was talking about a friend of ours, and 22 years old, hey, folk, young people, turn your ear on here. Listen to this real good. Get the narcotics out of your life if you're taking them, okay? The Oxycontins and the Hydros, get them out of your life. The very individual I'm talking about came in, had a, had a time with his mom and dad, and went on to bed that night about 11 o'clock and popped a few of those hydrocodones, some of them Oxycontins, and went on out into eternity, friend. Listen, that opium slows the heart down. It stops the heart, and you can die in your sleep from this filth. Boy, that ain't popular preaching, is it? But I'll tell you, nobody wants to tell you about it. Nobody wants to, wants to holler. Nobody's there when I'm standing over the body of a 22-year-old who's eat this stuff and he's quit breathing because he didn't get a hold of the wisdom of God. I promise you, these young people that have died recently, if they could have done it God's way, if they could have changed things, they'd have done it. The call of God, God looked down on a world that was sin-cursed. Now look, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that you and I sin. I mean, there's nobody in this building who does not sin. And if you raise your hand and tell me you don't sin, you need to get up here right now because you're lying in the house of God. 
All of us sin. The Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. Not one. We're all in desperate need of Christ's salvation. And what he's saying here, God looked down on this world and God extends the call of God to a man, woman, boy, or girl who has never received Christ as Savior, who are totally ignorant of the benefits of Calvary, friend. They don't even have a clue how God could change their mind. And there is a call from heaven, friend, to mankind is what the Proverbs is saying, for a man to accept Jesus God's wisdom, amen, the call of God, God's calling. Now this call, let me tell you what it is. If you have your Bible, turn with me over to 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it is the call of reconciliation. In other words, God wants to change the relationship he has with mankind. Let me ask you about this a minute. Uh, those of us that are married, those of us that have children, those of us that are in life, I know all of us have good relationships, I hope we do, with our mate. What kind of relationship do you have with God? How are you talking to the Lord? Have you been, been beside him in a little while? Have you been underneath his grace? Have you been around him? How close are you and I to the God of heaven that shed his blood at Calvary and gave himself for you and I? God wants to scrooge up and come up close to you and I. And if you're lost without Christ, God's will, God's call this morning is to change your life through Calvary, friend. That's what he's saying. The call of God. God wants to reconcile. God wants to restore. Listen, God wants to bring harmony in, in between you and him. There's no harmony. We're at enmity with God, the scripture says, before we're saved. What do you mean enmity, preacher? If you've never been saved, if you're not saved this morning, you're not even aware of it. The scriptures teach you are at war with God. You're God's enemy. You've never been born in the family of God. And the scriptures teaching here that God through Christ is like wisdom. He's on the higher places. He's by the gate. He's crying out. For the greatest decision in your life would be to let him in your life. He's crying out. Wisdom is calling. And now look here. Have you ever had to make an important decision? I want you to raise your hand. I'm talking about decisions that you, don't know, that you know will change your life. If you make the wrong one, it'll, it'll change your life. How many have ever done that? Here's the thrust of my message this morning. God is teaching you and I here that we can make a right decision every time. What do you mean? I mean, if you knew you could make the right decision every time, who in the world would not do it? He's saying here that God, through Christ, is a picture of wisdom, and God's crying out to a lost man, woman, boy, or girl, Call out to God while you've got time. Receive Christ while you can. The first step of wisdom, listen, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now look, we, we use the word fear here. The Bible does. It doesn't mean be scared of God. Now we ought to, hey, we ought to be scared of God if we die without Christ. Because we're going to a place where the worm dieth not. And the fire is never quenched. I'm telling you, hell is hot. Hell is real. You don't have to do nothing to go there but die and avoid the call. All you got to do is avoid wisdom. All you got to do is die without Christ and you can die and go to hell. That's God's giving you that choice, friend, if you want to. I don't want nobody to die and go. I'm so glad God called in my life. I'm so glad I realized wisdom was on the high hill and the gate and the call of grace was in my life. You know what grace is, don't you? Undeserved kindness. None of us deserve salvation. 
We're all filled with sin. We're all determined to die without Christ. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now look, it's God the call. The word call here carries the meaning to reconcile. If you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is where I had you turn. Let's look there. Look in verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. And all things are of God. Watch it. You know what he's saying there? All things are of God. What he's saying is there's no coincidences. <laughs> oh boy, I'm going to have time with this. You, you don't get saved when you want to get saved. You get saved and I get saved when God wants us to get saved. And what Paul is saying here, there's no coincidences all things are of God. God's brought heartache. God's brought sorrow. God's brought difficulty in your life to hem you up to see your need for salvation. Watch your Bible. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. All these things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself. He's brought us into harmony is what Paul's saying. He's brought us into a relationship who have reconciled us unto himself. How, how did we come to God? By Jesus Christ. And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Watch your Bible. Now we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you, uh, by us, we pray you in Jesus' stead, be ye reconciled. Get saved, watch it. Here's why. Here's why you've been reconciled. Don't ever lose it. Don't ever let it slip. Don't let it get away from you. For he, speaking of God, hath made him, speaking of Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the cry of wisdom. God is pleading from heaven, get saved, get saved. Do it now, don't wait, don't turn, don't stop. Turn to Christ, I wisdom. Cry out loud. Now look here, the call of God is for a man, woman, boy, or girl to get saved. Now listen. The wisest thing you'll ever do in life is allow Christ to come into your heart and life. You can't do anything that's any wiser. The smartest thing you and I will ever do is allow Jesus to come in and take up residence. Now when he does, old things are past. Glory be to God. All things have become new. I mean, God cleanses you and I through the blood of Jesus. He washes the filth out of my life. I don't ever have to lay down and think about how bad I am no more. I don't have to lay down with a guilty conscience. God's blood stained better the cross has took it all out of my life. And he did it all in a second. Can you imagine that? All those years I live like hell and live like the devil. I called out one time in sincerity, heeded to the call of God, Brother Mark, and Christ saved me in the wretched state that I was. Glory to his name. I love him. The smartest thing I've ever done is got on my face before a holy God and pled for him to forgive me of my sin and save me before I went to hell. I'd be in hell or jail, I'm confident of it. Oh, I love him today. We got so much to thank him for, just our salvation. You remember when he called in your life? <laughs> hey, when he called in my life, I had five pounds of dope in my house. <laughs> About a case of Miller Lite, I was living it up, buddy. That's the truth. That's the truth. Why get up here and lie? Why not tell the truth? 
My mama didn't have no precious angel. Are you kidding me? My mama had a hellion. My mama had a rebel who shook his face and his hands in God's face and to his wife and said, Go on down there at the church. I ain't lost nothing down there. And I'd be in hell this morning. Lost without God. If it wouldn't have been up to my little wife telling me, let's go on down there and I'm going to leave you. I'm going back and live with mom and daddy if you don't come on down here to church and talk with this man. And I'll never forget it. I wasn't in church. You don't have to get saved in church. Good place to get saved though. I was by myself, Diane. I was by myself. And I'm, this is what's missing in the church. And I'm telling you, friend, the overwhelming, convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God swept in on me. You can argue with a lot of people, but I promise you, you'll not argue with him. No. <laughs> Just like Jesus, when he sets up his kingdom, nobody's going to look at him and say, Lord, could I suggest something? <laughs> You, have you, Lord, have you thought of this? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'll tell you where they're going to be. Prostate on our face before the feet of the Lamb of God who shed his blood for this world. And all you'll be hearing is glory to the Lamb of God who shed his blood for thousands on me. Praise unto the glory and to the highest. Hosanna. There'll be no recommendations. There'll be no advice. I was in that room. I'm convinced until God hems man up, a man, woman, a boy, girl, they'll never get saved. God flooded that room, buddy. You ever had somebody tell you how wrong you are? Slip your hand up. Help me out a little bit. And it make you mad. I've had somebody tell me how wrong I am, and they were right. And I got mad as everything, Brother Paul. Who in the world do you think you are telling me you sorry? No good. But I'm going to tell you something. When the Spirit of God started rewinding all the wickedness in my life and how he had saved me from dying and going to hell, I didn't argue with him one bit. I didn't debate with him, Brother Kyle. You know what I said? I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. I didn't try nothing. I just sit there and, and all I knew, the wisest thing I could do was call out. Lord, you're right and I'm wrong. I'm headed to hell if you don't change my life. And so the wisest thing I've ever done in my life is listen to the call of God for salvation. And I called out and I said, Lord Jesus, I remember that my prayer. I remember my exact prayer. I said, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart and life and save me. And about the time I almost finished, it hit me. And I tagged my prayer 30-something years ago with this. And helped me to regain my family. And I tell you, buddy, I got up and I walked in my wife's presence. I didn't have to say nothing. She knew it. God's real. God is real. Heaven is real. Listen to me. Hell is real. And the wisest thing a woman, boy, or girl can do is give their heart to Jesus. Listen to the text. Now watch it. I'm almost finished. You see the call of God. I want you to see the counsel of Christ. He talks about counsel there. Now what is his counsel? Listen to what he says. I love them that love me. You can't love God if you're not a child of God. You got to be saved. So if you're a Christian today, 
God's counsel for you and I, the way to make sure things go right in our life, one thing. Just love him. Now look, you'll never go wrong here, I promise you. I'm telling you, I'm saying it public, I'm saying it on Facebook. I ain't trading nobody for the Lord, not even my wife. No, sir. I ain't trading my grandchildren, my dad, my mom. Nobody's got his space in my life. He said, I love them that love me. You know what? Many people don't even know what love is because they're lost. They've never been saved. Once you get saved, you realize what love is. And sometimes we need the Lord to love. Oh, I need him to love on me. Amen. Have you ever had somebody do something special for you? Yes, Have you? I mean, serious. You've done something and it means what? Well, ladies, you ever got to come home? Hey, hey, fellas, listen up. Here comes a whole mouthful of wisdom February 14th's coming up. Get in your wallet. Do something. Sell a fishing rod, a gun. Get them some flowers. Or you deserve the outcome that you did. Love on them. You're supposed to say amen right there, okay? Love on your wife, amen? There's wisdom in that, isn't there, Chuck? You ever had somebody do something? You ever had somebody do something special for you? Hey, I got 30, I did something. Uh, if this comes across like I'm bragging, I'm really not. I promise the Lord I'm not. I got the best wife in the world. I really do, buddy. And uh, let me tell you what I've done. You ever wanted to give somebody what they wanted? I mean, if you had the opportunity. Well, it's been a long time ago. I went out and bought her an infinity. And I had the bright idea to sell it. That was stupid. <laughs> she liked it. She liked it, Misty. And uh, so times passed, and we've had a few cars since then. That was a stupid move. And so I'm sitting there thinking, it ain't me, it's the Lord. 35 years. If you stay with him 35 years, he owes you something special. Okay? <laughs> and she owes you something special if you stay with her 35. They flip that coin twice. 35 years we've been married. And I'm thinking, well, I guess I'll get her. Yeah, I'm thinking, 35 roses. That ain't going to do it. She didn't have a clue. She didn't know what I was doing. You know what I done? I got her brand new off the showroom floor, 2022 Infinity. And said, I love you. Now, hey, it's all right. If you've got the, if you've got the ability to do that and you can make that payment, it's okay. I tithe on her. Don't I don't steal from God, do I? And so you know what I did? She pulled up and I said, Happy anniversary. I love you. Well, God's that way. I didn't get that from me. That didn't come from me. That come from the character of Christ. God is that way. He canceled here. I'm closed. Let me get here. I'm going to close. Watch what he said. He said, I love them that love me. Now watch him. He says that wisdom is far above, Misty, rubies. You believe that? I do. What, what, what's this? Look here. I saw this. I about started to run now. Look, look, look at it. I'm in 2 Corinthians. That reads different from Proverbs 8. Okay, Proverbs 8, here I am. Okay, look here in the verse 18, uh, verse 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. 
Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Watch this. God's saying His fruit, in other words, His blessings. Watch this. My fruit's better than gold. <laughs> Yea, than fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. Watch it. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of paths of judgment, that I may cause those. Watch this. He says, here's a counsel. And this is what I deliberately do. That I may cause those that love me. Look at it, underscore it. You ought to underscore it here. That love me to inherit substance. Now, for some of you that might not understand what that word means, I want to bring it down to where I'm at. I believe it means the commodities of God. <laughs> Do you know what that means? God doesn't expect you and I to live on this earth without surviving. He's, he's, made, he's met all of our needs. You know what commodities are, don't you? For example, beef, iron, steel is what we trade in. Now, how many of you, if you could go back, God would rewind it, and God, and you'd know right when to invest in Amazon. You knew, would you do it? I would. Bill Gates. You remember when Apple and all that, he turned Apple down, or Apple turned, Apple turned him down? What a stupid move. If you knew, look, here's what I'm getting. If you knew a right decision that would bring financial stability or physical health to your life, would you not do it? You'd be stupid not to. I'd be stupid not to. God is saying here that his wisdom is better than gold. <laughs> his wisdom, his prudence is better than fine silver. And God said, those that love me, I'm going to give them substance. God said, I'm going to bless them. Now this my has it, brother. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Here it is. I'm almost finished. I was just thinking yesterday, I was sitting there pondering the things of the Lord. And I was going over this message and I was thinking about, I've been burdened about seeing. I want to see somebody saved. I've been praying. And I was counting the blessings in my life and all of a sudden, have you ever had the Lord to remind you of something that he did for you? I'm sitting there and here he is. He swooped in on that chair of mine. I stopped yesterday. We went to Sam's. I don't know why, but beef is a commodity and I love steak. I'm a ribeye guy. So I stopped and I didn't want to thaw nothing out of the freezer, Brother Josh. Josh, I didn't want to thaw nothing out of the freezer. I don't like my steak. To, I, I like my steak to sit out and age a little bit. You know what I mean? I didn't want it to thaw. Don't worry about them. They're good. And I went through Sam's. He knows what I'm fixing to tell you. He knows it's the truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. I'm not just preaching a point. So I went through Sam's. Have you been, have you been there lately? Sam's. Glory be to God, those ribeyes. I'm telling you, man, they're huge ribeyes and fillets. I went by there. Are y'all like me? Do you always grab the most expensive thing? And I reached down there for a pack of them. I said, glory to God, them look beautiful. And I picked them up. $19 a pound. Wow. $19 a pound. <laughs> and I started looking again. So I got something, that, you know, something a little reasonable for me and the grandkids. I took them down. And I got home and it was thawed out. And I thought, well, you got a whole half of beef in the refrigerator. You remember I bought that from Jerry? You remember that, don't you? Nineteen. Did y'all hear me? Nineteen dollars a pound. At nineteen dollars a pound, we're not going to be eating much steak. <laughs> And did you know what I've done months ago? Brother Cagney's daddy raises beef. 
He said, let's split a beef. I said, okay. Months back, before I knew that beef would be $19 a pound, God threw a whole half a cow in my freezer. You know what I paid for it, brother? God killed me with a lightning bolt, I promise you. $2 a pound. And the roast make them over there look sick. The T-bone, what I'm saying, that's a, it may sound a silly illustration to you, but I'm telling you, when you start revealing that you want God's counsel and you want God's wisdom and you want things God's way, I'm telling you, God said my wisdom is like, it's more than pure gold. It's better than rubies. It's finer than choice silver. Listen, and God said, those that love me, I'm going to increase their substance. Now, I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel here, but I am preaching a, a, a biblical fact. When you fall in love with God and you love the Lord with all your heart and you're going to submit to all his ways, I'm telling you right now, friend, God will bless you. God will prosper your life. God does that. Amen. And I'm wondering today, as we stand to our feet, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, she comes with a song. Just come play something softly for me. I want to ask you a question today as no one looks around. First of all, I want to talk to Christians just for a moment before we leave. How close are you to him? How, how close are you to him? Do you love him? Do you love him with all your heart, mind, and soul? Are you in love with him? Do you love him? As she begins to play, I want to ask you a question. How long has it been, friend, since you've got somewhere still in the stillness and the quietness of the moment? You got somewhere and you said, Lord, I'm not coming to ask you for nothing. I'm, God, I know I probably need to ask for forgiveness, but right now, today, I'm coming. I just want to publicly come and kneel publicly before the public, and I want everybody to know that I'm in love with God, and I love the Lord with all my heart and all my soul. And Maybe you step out, child of God. Maybe you say, preacher, I don't have to do that. I love the Lord. Well, maybe you ought to. Maybe you ought to. I've had my opportunity to stand up here and preach and tell you how much. I, maybe you just want to come down here somewhere and stain this rug with tears of adoration. God's loved you. God's done something for your life. He's done something for you. He may have done something a whole lot better than what I was talking about, but God's done something in your life. He's salvaged you. He's blessed you. He's, maybe he's given you a job. Maybe he's given you good health. I don't know what it is. But you just come out of obedience and kneel and say, Lord, I want to be known of one that loves you. And I'm coming in quietness, in the stillness, in the intimacy, in the privacy of prayer. And I'm telling you, Lord, that I love you. And I'm grateful for you saving me. I'm grateful for your blessings on my life. And as a child of God, I want to thank you. You need to do that, child of God. Would you slip out right now? Would you do that now? Don't wait. Maybe you're here and you've never been saved. Wisdom's in the streets. She's on the high hills. She's by the gate of the city. And she's crying out. Give your heart and life to me while you can. Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow. Come to the Spirit and the bride, say come. And you need to be saved today. Would you do that? Would you come now? Would you do that? I'm going to let her play one more verse. If no one moves, we're going to go home. As some are praying, you need to come. I'd like to encourage our social, people on social media, if you need to be saved, get it, do it today. 
If you're a child of God, you're not in the house of God, and you could be here, you need to be in the house of the Lord. And maybe this morning you said, Preacher, I don't feel inclined to come to the altar, but I do love the Lord, and I'd like you, I'm the only one up here looking around, I'd like you and the Lord Jesus to know it just by an uplifted hand. God spoke to my heart today, and I want him to know it. God bless your heart. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see them. It's been so good to be in God's house. Amen. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Don't forget, if you're able to be here tonight, we start our service at 445. We'll be back in the life of David at 5 o'clock. Uh, right after prayer. We've been just coming in at 445, having prayer and going right into service. Um, so it's been so good to be in the house of the Lord. And let me say this, pray for Brother Ephraim um, and his family, the Bates family. They've been coming and uh, all of them have had COVID. Right before they got COVID, they came and we were out of church. And so please remember this family. And ask God to keep this COVID out of our church, out of our community, out of our city. And uh, all right, any other, maybe a last word before we close. Anybody got a prayer request or something real quick before we close? We'll give you an opportunity. Anyone real quick? Yes, sir. Amen, Doc. Yes, sir. That's it. That's exactly where I was aiming at. And uh, it goes on, and oh, we beheld his glory. Now I'm in John chapter, I'm in 1 John now. Yeah. I love him. Amen. That's it. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Someone else before we dismiss? Anyone else? <laughs> yes, sir. Are you a Christian? It's not like me to intervene, so I, but the song. Yeah, let's close the service with it. Just come on and, and uh, you sing us a verse of it and then we're dismissed, okay? You come on. The verse of scripture is Hebrews 4, 7. It says, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Page 327, if you want to turn there, you can. But I just want to sing you a verse. Jesus is tenderly calling you home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will you roam farther and farther away? Calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling, he's tenderly calling today. Dismissed. Please pray for us tonight. If you can be with us, be back 445. If not, maybe we'll see you Wednesday. God bless you. You're dismissed.